Hey guys, welcome to Veloxi Technologies. This is A.R. Shankar. In this lecture, we are going to see what is SonarCube and what is the advantages of using SonarCube. At last, how to set up SonarCube. To understand SonarCube better, let's jump into the development phase. In the development phase, developers write the code. Once they have written the code, we need to validate whether they have written the quality code or not. Quality code nothing but we need to check whether it is a bug free code or not. Is it secure or not? Secure nothing but it is not exposed to any secure vulnerabilities or problems. Duplication is avoided. Sometimes we may write repeated code. Instead of that one we can write once and we can use that functionality in other places. Maybe we can call it as a reusability. Then tested properly whatever code you have written. Whether have you tested it properly. Then complex code have you written any complex code if so it will be very difficult in case of any problems arises or somebody want to understand your code they will take much more longer time sometimes it may lead to confusion and uh, easy to integrate with others code nothing but uh, maybe you are working with a group of people or in a team then you need to integrate your code with their code so in these cases it should not be create a problem Apart from this, you can do some other checks to validate your code quality. But uh, all this who can do? That is where peer review comes into the picture. Maybe you can ask your colleague who is good in writing the programs, whatever you are writing. And he will review it and he may suggest some of the betterments to your code. But if you are writing lengthy of the programs, reviewing manually is a quite a tedious task. So we need some kind of automation which can help us to review our code quality. That is where static code analysis comes into the picture. By using static code analysis, you can improve the code quality and also it reduces a lot of your time efforts. So now let's understand what is the static code analysis tools are available in the market. I have just listed some of the code quality or code analysis tools. So SonarCube, Cleverty, Rexis, ViraCode, CodeSense. Okay, these are some of the code quality analysis tools. Among these, SonarCube is one of the static code analysis or code quality tool. Now, what is the advantages of using SonarCube? The major advantage of using SonarCube is it is quality management tool. What do you mean by quality management? Apart from the code analysis, it is also gather the reports of various testings which you are doing. Maybe unit testing reports, code coverage reports, and few other things it is going to collect and display in the GUI in very nice understandable format. So if you see here quality gate is passed, how many bugs you have, vulnerabilities, code smells, coverage, duplications, such kind of information is displayed over here. So it is quite easy for us to understand where you can improve. Now let's understand the components of SonarCube three major components in the SonarCube server. First thing, rules. Rules nothing but instructions which you need to follow while writing your code. There are some best practices, right? Those are converted into rules and they kept it. There are many default rules which comes along with your SonarCube installation. So you can run those rules. Next thing, database. You have rules. These rules are run on your source code. Once that is done, you will get an analysis report. That analysis report you need to store in a database. That is the reason in SonarCube, whenever you install, you will get a database as well. Next, web interface. Once your analysis reports are stored in database, through the web interface, you can see and understand easily. Okay, these are the major components. Apart from this, we have a elastic search which helps to search required data from your SonarCube database. Next to thing, Sonar Scanner. Sonar Scanner is a service or agent which runs on the system where code exists. Let's take that you have a Java code. Now you want to gather the report of your Java code. In that case, you need to install Sonar Scanner on the where your source code exists and run the scan. Once it runs the scan, it is going to gather the report and that will be get published into the sonar cube. How it is getting published, I will discuss in a while. Next thing, wherever you have a sonar scanner, you should have the source code. Okay, that you need to remember. Next, this sonar scanner can run and generate reports from quite different languages. If you want to know the list of the languages which are supported by our sonar cube and sonar scanner, let's jump into sonar cube website and check it out. You can see here, this is the SonarCube official website and if you scroll down, it supports 27 programming languages and if you want to see the detailed one, 
you can see over here these all are the languages which are supported by the sonar cube it can able to generate code quality report of any of these programs all right let's go back next thing we will see how the communication happens between the sonar cube and sonar scanner so let's take this this is a developer system or where your source code does exist and we want to run the sonar scanner over here so we must install sonar scanner over here this is the sonar cube server where we have a database and you just think that it is a web interface so first step sonar scanner collects required information from the source code so in this case your source code should have the sonar scanner dot properties file in that it will have some of the information that it is going to collect it if it doesn't have the sonar scanner file okay you should generate one that is the first step second step is it is going to gather the applicable rules let's take that it is a java program how does it know because in the sonar scanner file it will have that information now sonar scanner is going to pull the rules which are applicable for the java in next step it is going to generate the reports sonar scanner runs the rules on the source code and generate a report like any bugs are there security problems code coverage issues such kind of things it is going to run and it generates a report this report with the help of sonar cube it stores in a database once it is stored in a database through the graphical user interface we can able to see a visual diagrams or visual reports which can be easy for us to understand that is how sonar cube and sonar scanner works together to generate the reports now let's go and set up sonar cube server to set up sonar cube server i have created list of the steps in my github account let's go and have a look this is my github repository I'm going to share this URL in the description of the video. You can go and check it out. Here you can see a directory called Sonar Cube. If you go inside, I have a couple of files. To set up Sonar Cube, you can choose this option. And here I mentioned prerequisites and installation steps. As part of prerequisites, we need an EC2 instance with 2 GB RAM. So T2 small instance can be capable to handle our sonar cube and same thing is mentioned in the sonar cube documentation maybe you can open the sonar cube documentation over here and here you have a hardware requirements and if you see sonar cube server requires at least 2 gb of ram to run efficiently and 1 gb of free ram for the os anyway i tried with the 2 gb system it is working fine and another thing which we need to notice is supported platforms and if you see the java we should install java why because sonar cube developed in java program and uh, if you are using oracle jre then we should go with the server side oracle 11 even in the scanner oracle 11 we required similar way open jdk we need 11 we need to install open jdk 11 before installing or before setting up sonar cube all right so now let's go back and we can see here i already mentioned these two next thing we need a sonar cube user why because sonar cube cannot be run as a root on unix based systems so create a dedicated user account for sonar cube if necessary this is what we are going to do we can create a sonar admin user which can be capable to handle our sonar cube next to download sonar cube you can use this url to download the latest version i'm just opening it in the new window and if you see here we have different editions or else you can go to the sonar cube official website this is sonarcube.org and the download option here you can see all the editions community edition is the free and open source we can use this one without any issue but if you want to go with the developer or enterprise edition we must go with the free trial so you can use it but this is the latest version i can say 9.0.1 but if you want to go with the lta nothing but long term support or stable version we should go with the 8.9.2 and this we can download it from here all right next thing once we have downloaded just unzip it and change the ownership to the sonar user in our case we are going to create sonar admin to him we are going to grant access to this opt because i am going to download it onto opt opt sonar cube directory once that is done we should start it as a user okay that's it after that we can access it from the browser all right so to start with it we need an ec2 instance with minimum of 2 gb ram I have already launched a server and named it as a sonar cube and it is just now came up and another thing is if you go to security group okay we have opened port number 9000 you must open this port to access sonar cube from the browser 
Now let's connect to this system. I'm just copying it. Session SSH and I'm loading my key pair DevOps key EC2 minus user. Okay, so I have logged into my system and we need to install Java, right? And also we need to do some setup. That's the reason I'm switching as a root and clear the screen. And first thing is we should install Java. Let's see whether Java is installed or not. Okay, there is no Java installed so far. Now what I can do, I can install Java to do that one M list. We are going to install OpenJDK. OpenJDK we need 11, but let's see what and all options are available. We have Java 7, OpenJDK, Java 8, but we need Java 11. For that we can use the Amazon distribution. Amazon Linux Extras is a Amazon Linux distribution and you can see list of the packages which are available over here. We are looking for Java Open JDK 11. This is what I would like to install. So we can give Amazon Linux Extras install and the Java Open JDK 11. That's it. So it may take a while to install. Let's wait. Yes. All right, our Java installation is successful. Now let me check Java minus version. Okay, this time it is showing it as a 11.0.12. All right, next thing we need to download the packages. For that, I am going to opt directory. I don't have anything over here. So to download the packages, wget and go to your documentation. Here you will have a latest version or else you can directly go here and I am going to take the long term support version, right click and copy link address so that we can copy the link and paste it over here and you can see here it is downloading SonarCube 8.9.2. Again it may take a while. Okay, download is successful. If I check the files, yes you can see here SonarCube 8.9.2. Now let's extract it for that unzip because it is a zip file. So I am using unzip. Unzip is successful and uh, now let's go into sonar cube and if I check there are multiple files among these if you go to the config directory in config directory we will have a file file called sonar properties. Okay, if you are using apart from the default settings then you need to update this sonar properties file. Okay, let me open this one and uh, run through with some of the important uh, parameters among this sonar.jdbc username password. So these are for databases if you want to connect with the database which is running in the other system. Yes, you need to enable it. Next thing is Oracle if you are running independent database then what is the database you are using according to that you need to enable. So in next lecture I am going to show you that PostgreSQL how to use it. Okay, we need to uh, enable it. Okay, apart from this if you are using Microsoft SQL Server you can enable like this you can have the different different parameters you can upload even you can see here sonar cube web port it is 9000 if you wish to change from 9000 to something else you can change it this is also sonar cube web host from where you need to access it you can restrict that such kind of options are customizable in the sonar properties file. Okay, it will be a bit advanced topic. So I'm skipping this one at this moment. So let's go back and if I check again, there is a bin directory under bin. You can find the different operating systems. It can support Mac OS, Windows, Linux. But in our case, we are looking for Linux. Go inside to Linux and here we have a file called sonar.sh. This is what we need to start. So to start dot slash sonar, we should give and start we should give if you don't provide anything okay it will give the list of the options which you can input with this one but anyway we should run it as a another user because root user is not entertained to start it because your elastic search works with the non root user if you want to try it out we can just try it out okay let's see what will happen and it is saying that it is started but we'll check the status now you can see here again it got stopped okay that's the problem it is not worked with the root user if you want to see the what exactly the error you will have a log file over here okay if you go here 
pwd under your sonar cube directory there is a logs okay logs directory under logs you will have a log file i'm just exploring this log file and you can see the error explicitly cannot run elastic search as a root that is the error which is it is triggering so we must create a non non root user for that i am going to create a new user user sonar admin okay and the next thing i need to give ownership of the opt sonar cube why because we have the sonar.sh file over there without privilege we cannot able to start as a sonar admin so what i will do sorry ch one minus r sonar admin colon sonar admin opt slash sonar okay so now we have changed the ownership and if you check the cd slash anyway i'm in the same directory and if i do ll now you can see all are owned by the sonar cube user okay if you see earlier it was owned by the root user all right now let's jump in as a sonar user sonar admin and uh, let's jump back to opt sonar cube then cd bin and linux here we have a sonar then sonar sh dot start so this is how we can start now let's check the status okay it is running fine and another thing you can check that on which port your sonar cube is working net stat sorry minus t u l p n okay so this is the command to check it out and if you see here there is a 9000 port is opened and it is running by java application now let's try to access our sonar cube from the browser 9000 once it is ready we can provide the credentials default credentials for sonar cube is admin and admin all right admin admin okay in the first login it will ask us to change the password i am just changing the password once we have changed the password we will successfully logged into the gui of sonar cube this is our gui and you can see there are various options over here in next lecture i will just quickly run through with the what and all these options how we can use it that's all for this lecture thanks for watching and see you in the next lecture